important for them to add this because this is about you know increasing time, right? increasing the relation. We're all set. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I've got a little bit too. Okay. Go ahead. Here right, comes Joe. You're all set. You're good. Well, I have three. Just one. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, you're Nearly. All that's good. Um, well, thank you very much. You said it's John. John Hi. Great. Double side. Nathan again. Hey. We're accelerating people. Okay. Yes. Hi. How are you? All right, time to get it all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. Ah. Hi, Nate Roach. I'm Ben. How are you? From Excel. Nice to meet you. Trini. Where do you work? Um, I'm, um, I'm actually a contractor. Great. Um, I'm, so my next gig uh, starts next week, actually, at Cancer Research. So oh, wonderful. Uh, that's a great project. Yeah, have you? Have yes, you no, I have heard of it. Yeah. And, and I know that there is a UK Cancer Research project. What is the, um, uh, what is your goal? In doing it? Yeah, so, so at the moment, I'm, um, I'm actually just, just going to start next week. So um, I know they've just got a whole bunch of uh, initiatives in there. So right. Are you, you a marketer? Or? Uh, um, I'm Great. You see, so we're gonna. There's gonna be some. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, to be okay. To be fair, one of the reasons why I'm here um, is uh, because I've also got my own uh, business. Ah. Uh, uh, um, my own e-commerce setup. So uh, a lot of the development ones, I just, I, you know, yeah, I usually tend to go to those, and of course, I'm just trying to differentiate. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Good. How many um, are people opting out of the keynote now, or what? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So coffee, coffee, coffee. 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 Oh, well, they're all going to be late. They're all going to be late. And John's going to make sure we're on time, right? Uh, yeah. You're um, going to yell at me. I'll, I'll give you. I'll get. I'll wait around around for ten and five minutes. Just have to throw us. They're probably going to be late. They're all going to be grabbing coffee after the. Anyway, it's tough. If God gets recorded automatically, we can't do the times. Right. No, I understand. It'll all go on. Yeah. And on top of that, everyone's going to get all hyped with the caffeine, so it's better not sound. There's a mic for you as well. Yeah. That's going to be kind of difficult. Yeah. I'm rather loud, so I hope. Yeah, the, the, there is speakers and uh, mics in the ceiling that should pick, pick you up. Um. Like on anyway. Thank you. Um, there's no speaking here, so. All right. 
But it's, it, yeah, it, it, it's definitely okay, just put it right here. Start on yeah, two. Do you want me to? Yeah, why not? Okay, great. Hi, guys. Um, journey mapping. So, show I mean, who's a developer and who's a marketer? You guys. Okay. Who's a marketing business? Both the yeah, consultant. You guys? Uh, yeah, run the business. Run the business? That's delivery management. Delivery management. Fun. Developer as well. Okay, so. Do you, are you currently knowing what this is? Do you guys work with this yet? Journey mapping, buyer and customer. Brand new topic, for the most part. Okay, that's good. Um, we'll run through the agenda quick, like who we are, what the buyer journey, customer journey is, why people are using it, and how we get started, right? And then some questions at the end. We'll keep it very, very, very simple. Um, Hi, I'm Nathan Roach from Accelerant, marketer, content guy, creative apparently. That's what they say. Anyways. Yeah, and then three, three, uh, that's the kind of text so I love to connect people with process and connect with us. Yeah, he's an operations guy, right? And I'm a marketer. So we've got like a RevOps conversation going on here. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so we're hearing now, right, that it's all about the journey. And we keep seeing these words come up again and again and again. And aren't just trends just terrible and tiring? The next HubSpot, you know, two cent word. Right? Is this just going to be another, you know, flash in the pan trend, mapping journeys, right? Just the next big thing. Maybe in a couple months people stop using the phrase. Probably not, right? This has been going on before people have been calling it. By its name. So it's not like the concept's going to disappear, the label may change. But the underlying philosophies, that's not going to change. Um, not at all. Um, journey mapping, it, it's a way, right, to see what customers, buyers, clients, candidates, how they experience their journey with your agency, service, or organization. It's from their perspective. There are particular touch points that they go through uh, on each journey, right? Depending on who the persona is, and whether or not you're someone who's looking to hire people within, within an HR department or grow leads, they're going through a journey, right? And um, like Trini's work in, in Accelerant is our customer success journey management, how the customer experiences it. Yeah, that's it. So we, uh, we look at something, you know, all of us who should be on all people, including customers or people, um, <laughs> stakeholders or people. So in life, we go through a journey, right? So on this case, uh, we, what we're trying to look at is the buyer's journey and customer's journey from their perspective. Right. So, I mean, he's looking at how customers journey through, right? And I'm looking at how buyers journey through, right? Marketing operations. And it's one handoff. Um, there are all different kinds of journeys, right? These journey maps. Um, this one here is um, is about uh, mobile software and hardware, right? Yeah. So this is like somebody's going through this journey where um, the device has some problems and, and how do they fix it? So how do they face the problem and then what what is what is their feeling about it? So initially talks about you know, these are another thing. You need to actively catch what your customer is going through. And then you know, figure out how to relieve them of that situation. So, you know, talk to them. Uh, 
Right, this is just one example of many, right? They all look more or less the same. You have touch points and you have faces. This here is simply a, a journey for somebody who's trying to create a video, like a video with their camera. Start record, download to computer, import and edit, write, export, upload, and share. These are actions, questions, moments, pain points that this person has going through this process. It's basic philosophy of someone trying to solve a problem, right? Uh, this here is a touch points for HR, right? A candidate journey touch point. Uh, you can see here, this is what, uh, a, an example from an HR team, you know, being aware, considering, desiring, acting upon hiring a candidate, right? Candidate going through the journey, right, of the HR department. Um, so we'll be looking at these two though specifically, the buyer's journey and the customer journey. Um, I'll start here. It's important that we don't look at these journeys as simply um, a means to land and expand, right? Because the buyer's journey is more about landing accounts, landing new business, and then the customer journey is really about expanding that account, right? Like getting more money from it, selling them more services. It's important from the beginning not to have that mentality with either journey because it has to be about their success. It's from their perspective, right? You have to be able to look at things from their perspective empathetically. So it's not about landing and expanding, it's about them achieving the success that, that they are striving for. Does that make sense? Um, ICP, um, ideal customer profile, right? This is like a persona that you do research to isolate who the buyer is, who the ideal customer and then from their perspective, right, they're experiencing uh, these journeys. Um, for the buyer's journey, think like marketing and sales funnel, right? Awareness, consideration, and decision. The marketing and sales funnel. That's really what this is. The buyer's journey sort of runs through this funnel. Right? And then uh, for the customer journey. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I keep telling people, people again, so just saying that, you know, success at the center of it, right? So, uh, you know, we, we treat customers as humans uh, rather than you know just another record in the CRM. Uh, so throughout the journey, that's why we need to visualize the journey, what is it they are going through, and you know, uh, talking about the I I T P customer profile. Basically, you know, journey is like you know the ups and downs in your life, right? So this partner or customer journey is also like with the loss of ups and downs. Initially, you know, typically, how do we start? Uh, we start with uh, you know, a new viable project, right? We start with a smaller team and we start working for that particular new customer. Uh, in, in, uh, and then, you know, we start learning a few things, what were our we going well and what we going, uh, where we have to improve. So those ups and downs are, have to be caught, but how do you catch them? You know, you start looking from the customer perspective, uh, you know, what, what is their feedback? There are a lot of checking points happening. So, you know, that is where you, continuously evolve in your ideal customer profile. Right. And then, you know, that, that's where you see, you know, through those check-ins, uh, through that customer's journey, looking through that, you see, you start understanding where are you creating value for them. Right, so, that's value right. so that they're different, um, but they run into each other, right? Ideally, the buyer becomes a customer, right? So it's technically one journey from, from buyer to customer, directed towards shared value creation, right? What you can make from this initiative. Um, the buyer stage is right, let's just, just quickly, awareness, consideration, and decision, right? Um, like, there's a problem or an opportunity that may or may not exist. Consideration, they've defined what that could be, right? Or you've helped them define what that could be, that, that opportunity or that challenge that they're facing. And then the decision factor, right, their plan of action to, to go with you or not, from a buyer's perspective to you as a vendor, right? So um, within these stages, right, you have different motivators and different mind frames, different touch points that run through. Is this making sense? Uh, this is an example of like a customer journey layer. Trini, do you want to walk through a little bit? Yeah, I mean, a typical example of how the
ads through uh, networks, to the shops, to online websites. They, they build the awareness, they know that such a thing exists, they go to the product, they register, they buy in, and then you know that's how uh, they go through that journey. And then you know what what do we do to keep them uh, keep them uh, throughout? Uh, how do we reach the stage where it is? Right. We build loyalty, right? So that is. So you can see this like starts with a buyer's journey, right, and then runs into acquisition, closure and then servicing and then expanding loyalty of that account. So you, so you can kind of see how it's streamlined. This is more of a user journey, right, in a way. Um, why should you do this? I mean, what's the, I mean, does this matter at all? Any of this seems rather basic, basic philosophy. Um, it helps for internal team alignment. Let's say Shreen and I are looking at the same journey strategically. We form one at Accelerant and we use that journey to come up with marketing, right? We use it to come up with uh, service uh, definitions and alignment. We're looking at the same thing. You have marketers and you have operations people, right? That are looking at the same journey and aligning their strategies, right? So that's certainly one. Um, personalization is huge now, right? Context is everything. In order for you to have context of where someone is at, where your buyer is at, what's in their head, or where your customer is at, what's in their head, you need to understand where they are in that journey, right? Because they fall in one phase or the next, one stage or the next. And, and if you have this map, it helps you to strategically empathize and to plan accordingly, right, uh, for these, these accounts. Um, we see it as, um, you know, customer and client success. It's the core, really, of everything. And, I talked about revenue, sales and marketing, and operations being aligned, right? We're calling it like RevOps. The crux of that is the journey. You all have to be looking at the same thing, right? Because at the end of the day, this is what's important. And whether or not you're a, um, whether or not you're a marketer or an operations person or a salesperson, it's all about this client, right? This buyer, this customer, and this is how you keep a central view uh, and into, uh, you know, it, it aligns the teams. You can use it for content planning across different verticals. Your buyer's journey is going to be full of stages that they go through, and these stages mean that they have certain questions, motivations. You can plan content to answer that based on where they fall in that journey. If you isolate a buyer's journey, you can create a content calendar to run for months from one concern to the next concern to the next, and you can streamline those topics, and you can use outbound, right, as a way to further personalize it. This making sense. It's also a content strategy as well. Um, and no training for the, um, this of course is the end goal. Yeah, so I mean, instead of, uh, to just to add, uh, you know, instead of revenue and operations working in different cycles, the journey brings Really helps to you know bring success as the centerpiece of it, connecting everything together. Uh, so that journey you know unites every so all the silos and you know work as one team and see how the customer uh, you know starts seeing that it, you know we are creating shared value for them. Right, which is the end goal basically, is to the expand these accounts, right? Yeah. Um, expand these accounts by means of serving the customer and making them successful for them value with you. How is this done? I made up this word, I think. <laughs> um, you have to look on the inside of your organization, right? You have to look on the outside, and you have to constantly retrospect and check, right? Because the buyers are any sort of living. It's not, it, it's going to change. As your services evolve, as, as certain challenges come up, this is not going to remain the same. As your target market shifts, it's going to change, right? As campaigns shift and marketing and strategy shift, um, you know, this is going to have to be looked at and evaluated. So the way you begin to actually create this is you have to start looking on the inside, looking on the outside via research, and constantly looking back and, and retrospecting. Um, you would think it's silly. Why would you look first internally? You should be looking, right, um, at the customer because this is from their point of view. But you have to identify who your ideal customer is. You know, who is your ICP? Are you marketing towards the person, for example, that 
is most strategic for you to land as a client? Do you know who that is? Do you have a persona, an ideal customer or client profile? You usually have it for HR. You know the kind of person you want to hire. You even have a profile written out for the kind of person you want to hire and the skills, right? And then you post the resume. You need those profiles for your ICPs. You need to understand strategically who you're looking to bring in, right? Um, and, and that needs to be planned. That's where this has to start, which means you have to look on the inside and identify who that ideal customer is for you, specifically. Does that make sense? Um, basically, what this produces um, is just a baseline an understanding, better understanding of current uh, capabilities and uh, sets uh, the board for adaptability. You, you have to begin somewhere, right? You have to start somewhere. Beginning with that ICP is, is the start. You know, who is your buyer? Who is your ideal customer? You're gonna have to get to know existing ones, the good ones, the ones that you want more of, right? You don't want more bad ones. There's a lot more good customers that you can amply service. So you have to tie that into your profile. Um, and this is going to look a little different for either journey, right? Um, you have to start looking at landed account success stories, what worked, what didn't, what the timeline was in the buyer's journey from lead to client. And then you're sketching, right? You're sketching this ideal customer profile. And you're aligning on that profile, both for operations uh, and revenue. Yeah, yeah. And, as, and as a buyer, you know, when they go to their buyer's journey, you make a lot of promises, right? Uh, this is because you have arrived at your perspective and you identified your ideal customer profile, then you reached out to them and this is the promise that, you know, that they have given, they have been given. Now that, that alignment is passed on and, uh, you know, and, and as, as one team, we are continuing proactively uh, in checking whether that promises are are being delivered, right? Uh, is the customer delight happening? Uh, what is the customer experience that they are going through? So there are a lot of checking points from the beginning uh, and, and it continues forever for them to be happy. Uh, so it's not just purely, you know, uh, just, uh, just a rating or it's not just uh, the typical customer support that we are talking about, but it's a lot of proactive measures uh, that uh, uh, proactive way of looking into what journey this customer is going through once they have become your customer. So a lot of touch points, check-ins, uh, you, know, uh, you know, frequent retrospection of whether you have delivered on what you promised, uh, and you know, uh, showing them how we could do better. Uh, you know, uh, walking them through that journey is also important, so you know, continuously educating the customer as well as you know, yours. Yeah, uh, you have to talk to them, right? I mean, like to create this, you have to be in communication with your customer. Yeah. You can't just spin this up in-house, right? Yeah. So on this, we talk about you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, you have to have like set of tools, processes, uh, which you onboard them to, uh, which uh, you need to educate them how to use them, and then, you know, you nurture them throughout the journey, uh, and then, you know, you inspire them further to scale to, to continue. Right. Um, you have to look on the outside, right, after looking inside at who your ICP is and speaking to your current customers, right, on the inside. You have to verify this, right, with research. You um, verify what you've collected on the inside by gathering intel on the out. Right? Um, for this, like, for the buyer's journey, you're going to do research into who your target market is at this point. Once you've isolated your ideal customer profile, right, the ICP, then you're going to be looking into market segments. Where do I get more of these? What does this ecosystem look like? What are their needs, right? So this is the time when you take your ICP and you start looking outward uh, strategically. And it's the same uh, with the customer journey um, uh, correct training when it comes to uh, understanding how others are doing it. It's a proactive research phase. It's, you can't create an echo chamber. Yeah, because, you know, if you Change is typically a constant, right? So, uh, you know, there was a time when people used to have floppy disks. Nobody talks about floppy disks. You know, things have changed. You know, the world has changed a lot. Same for me, that happened even for Drupal. You know, Drupal has evolved a lot. Uh, you know, so, you, you know, from, from 
the customer, you know, how, the, how did that change happen? You know, we learned from the customer uh, journey. We, we all understood, we all looked at what this customer is going through and how can we do things better for them? Uh, how can that journey be improved? Uh, from the outside, yeah. That? From the outside, so, yeah. yeah. Exactly, and of course, where do you begin with this? This is where you can start looking at templates, right? If you just start searching buyer journey templates, customer journey templates, you've begun, right? So if some of this seems a little intangible, a lot of words, no? And we can show you, we'll be showing you some examples. Start looking for these templates, right? Get your ideas going. And you can see how these sort of align. Um, and then obviously retrospect, which basically you're just constantly checking this, right? You're verifying it. What's their feedback, right? Um, are you huddling with both revenue and operations guys? Are you looking at what was successful, what wasn't successful? Are you gathering feedback from your customers where things went wrong? Maybe you misunderstood where they were in their journey, right? Maybe you need an empathy check, right? And you're only going to get that by retrospecting constantly to ensure that the system that you're creating makes sense, right? That it makes sense, that it's logical. Um, for the buyer's journey, you're going to have to use ROI measures, right? Um, metrics, lead generation website conversions, sales qualified leads, are, is the target market closing? Are you taking in new business strategically from the sector, right? You have to measure that success, because that ultimately is what's defining the, um, the success of the buyer's journey. The rest all pretty much falls under that measure, uh, and it's the same. It's the same with the customer journey as well. It, it, it's a lot of, uh, you know, you learn from success stories, uh, you, uh, you know, you generally, it, it, it's easy, it's not easy to connect the dots by looking at the future always, right? Uh, you connect the dots by retrospecting, right? So, uh, but still, there is a future that, 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 uh, that you have to walk through, uh, you have to look at it in a and, uh, you know, you uh, basically believe in something, uh, and what, what do you believe in, you know, that comes through the experience that you have so far, and then you start putting something together, and uh, you know you kind of draft a customer journey uh, with some simple sheets. You're getting the examples, and then you actually you know walk through walk through together with the customer through that journey, and you know start looking it from their perspective. Uh, did you know did we achieve what we set out for? You know we identify the uh, you know uh, inflection points where where we need to improve. We identify the good areas where we will continue, right, and that. That happens through routine checks and balances. You know, you, there's a lot of proactive routine checks and balances that need to be in place, uh, and, and you know that further de defines, uh, that further helps evolve you, you in your operational strategy. Does I mean, like, if you were to map this, your customer journey, and you were to have the measures and feedback in your system in place, what if you were to start sharing this during pitches? What if you were going to take the customer journey? And you are going to then share it with the client. You are to create like a customized customer journey for this potential client, right? You show them how you hope to evolve, right? In partnership with them, this becomes a differentiator. It's a very impactful piece, right? To show a potential client because you're invested in their success, right? You're looking at their journey. You're taking what you know to be um, their needs and their concerns, and you're mapping it. And then you can use that, you see. It's something that you can use to show that you are putting care into your clients, right? It's a very valuable collateral piece, and it's highly personalized, because that's the only way you create it. Does that make sense? Absolutely, and we, we started with uh, the ideal customer profile, right? And, and then we also talked about templates, but then you know we also showed like you said, uh, we stress that every customer is unique and there's no one size fits all journey. So. Right. Um, let's see, we can look at just like a buyer's journey baseline. Actually, I think we can go right here. Okay. Let's look at like this. You don't have, it doesn't have to be fancy. You start with a sheet. Open up a sheet. Look for templates online and start with something, right? It may look rough, but you have to start somewhere, <laughs> right? 
um, you can see the stages, right? Here's the ICP. You've isolated, let's say, government health care agency. And you see the stages that they go through, correct? Becoming aware that they have a problem, considering your services, making a decision um, uh, based on, on that. And then, obviously, um, you know, promote it. promotion, which means they're a promoter, they're a, an evangelizer. You can start with basic columns, like where do we engage? What are the touch points, right, of each of these stages with column A in sight, with the ICP in sight? And then for content, top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel, is this foreign? Have you guys heard this before? I hope most of you. You know, the phases of the, um, the buyer's journey funnel, right? The, um, this will help you understand what their motives and concerns are during each phase. See? Key mentions, tags. And then how do we answer these, right? What do we create to help answer some of this? That's your content calendar. That's how you create a content calendar from their perspective. You start with the ICP. You map the journey. You look at those touch points, those motives, and those concerns. And you create answers. You answer their questions, right? Or you, you, you share with them what they're looking for. And at the end of the day, it's going to be content, media, writing, blogs, white papers. You can plan it based on this. See what I'm saying? And, and then you map, right, one topic to the next. So you cover the different phases of the funnel, right, to try to convert the buyer. So this, it's a baseline. It's rough. But anyone can do this, right? I mean, you could copy this template and you could start looking at it from your agency's perspective. And you would come up with a content calendar. You can become a content director in <laughs> five hours. <laughs> Strategic and relevant, right? Okay. And want to go to the uh, customer journey one? Um, can they see? Oh, it's the other one here. Okay. Okay, no problem. Sorry. Yeah, so this is uh, getting to the customer journey, just a uh, summary of uh, again what we said so far. So, uh, you know, after as a company, uh, we identified the ideal customer and we reached out to them and we brought them to the door. We made a lot of promises, and then what happens? You know, we, we onboard them, we nurture them, and inspire them to continue with us. Right? Uh, so, uh, with that on one axis, we mapped uh, this the partner maturity model where you know, initially uh, we build confidence, we establish trust, we start delivering them, uh, and then expect, you know, we not, not just meet expectations, but we exceed expectations, you know, and then share value creation. And uh, this, this line that shows, like, you know, it's, it's again, the people which I said about, uh, you know, there's ups and downs, so we find, uh, you know, these are like, uh, <laughs> Constant check-ins have to be there to identify those ups and downs, uh, learn from it, and then, uh, or, or uh, you know, somewhere if it goes stagnant, you know that you know you're continuing to do what you've been doing by its back, and then you're not growing, you're you know, stagnant. So that that kind of thing can also happen in between, which gives you an indication that uh, you're not proactive, right? So uh, so these proactive check-ins and routines uh, happen through this journey, which is what you take. Uh, what you go uh, yourself and uh, you take the customer through this journey. Right? Uh, so we have a lot of action items here when it's in, uh, in the onboarding phase. Uh, we start to you know, easily you understand each other. Uh, the customer tries to understand each other more. You understand the customer uh, from their perspective, what, how you need to go through, what, what them through. Uh, the onboarding phase happens, where, which is where you build confidence in yourself. Stress, and then they Scaling, uh, uh, you know, the uh, you, you can then expectations and then scale up, right? Right. Imagine if you had this customized for every customer, right? If you could show them, right? Share with them 
your, what your plan is, you share basically, it's almost like a timeline as well, right? Like you could isolate project timelines based on this and the checkpoints and touch points therein. And then to show them, right, opportunities where you could take on other projects. You see, this is all about expanding, you know, shared value creation at the end. You can see how you can use this multiply um, for various, various initiatives. It's something to share with them, to create with them. You could run a workshop with them to produce something like this, to, to foster team alignment and understanding of what this engagement looks like. And then they feel confident that you have a broader understanding, right, of, of them, of their expectations, right? Um, what is next? Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Can we it, see? Again, I mean, again, on this one as well, you could just start with the template, just start with the sheet. Uh, if, you, if you can find only a lot of templates, uh, it's going to be rough. But, you know, <coughs> when you start, once you start thinking it from your own perspective, what's happening with you and your customers, you start understanding and you start tweaking it. Uh, and then, you know, you start implementing it and you start learning how, uh, how, how to evolve out of it, right? So these, we have this. Uh, the arrows, I think, should work. It's work. Okay. Yeah. So we 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 started mapping it to the different stages, which I had shown on the graph as well. You know, uh, introduction, the onboarding stage, and uh, you know, starting with certain pr prototypes or a smaller team onboarding, walk them through. You know, so you start defining what action items you have uh, on those different stages. It's here. You can move it like that. See. Does it scroll down? See, these are the checkpoints. See how the phases extend? And they map to the visual that you saw prior. This is a service offering. Yeah. yeah. Right? And these are, these, these are the checkpoints and steps, you would say. Yeah. yeah. So uh, different stages, uh, onboarding, nurturing, delivery, uh, exceeding expectations. So you start thinking further, deeper into each of those stages and have those uh, steps defined. You know, you exactly word it out. What is your customer's uh, customer? What would the what will the customer go through, right? So uh, you know, whether it's having a one-to-one -one with one of your team member, whether it's having a quarterly business review, uh, or whether it's uh, ha having to at attend a session where you onboard them into one of your tools. Uh, you know. Everything and every single action the customer will go through with you through that journey. That those are all detailed out into different stages of, uh, you know, in this case, the partner mat maturity model. And you can take your service offerings at your agency or that you personally, the services that you provide, and you can sort of map it out. See, flexible support is one of the things that we do at Accelerant, right? So, you know, this is just an initial drafting of the kind of checkpoints that we have going through the different stages. And your agency could, of course, do this as well, looking at your service offerings and verticals to then map it to this. Does that make sense? You can overlap your service offerings to the journey in order to, to detail out what they experience with you, right? Like a timeline. Yeah, and, and, and uh, that once you actually start doing it consciously, uh, you know, defining every stages and every steps that the customer will walk through, with you, uh, you know, that, that brings this kind of, you know, three-dimensional or multi-dimensional uh, centrally aligned central dashboard to you that, you know, which, which brings in the alignment between, uh, you know, all different silos, uh, uh, you know, all different uh, action, uh, you know, stakeholders, uh, and, you know, that, that brings uh, the entire team together uh, as a one team to, you know, help deliver that value. Resources, you can start there. This is just good for beginners. I think these articles are pretty solid. Basic stuff, but good to start with. <coughs> this one's ours. This one's from Gainsight. I got wrote that. Questions? Do you use this for every client? We use it for every client. Yeah, we do now. We're, I mean, this is, we have to start, um, you know, it's a prototype. I mean, we're just beginning with this. And um, as we iterate and get better, the work
workshops that we run with clients are going to get better. They're going to get more accurate. So it's our goal to run every client through a success journey, ultimately. We use it also for the buyer's journey. As in, yes, yeah, account-based marketing. So if you have a target market and then accounts within that market, and you cater the buyer's journey based on those key accounts, right? Is there a cost efficiency? director so she may be able to tell you. Yeah, I guess it's more of trying to tailor a solution that reduces the cone of uncertainty and while you are trying to do that exercise from the beginning, you may not have short term investments. If you start looking into the short term uh, you know short term gains and short term returns on investment that probably may not be visible immediately. But I guess this journey and mapping it out, uh, mapping the customer journey with the partnership maturity model definitely has a long-term perspective to it. So it's more of a mind shift, as I understand, looking a little beyond, though predictability is not there, uh, it's more like working with the client towards that. Yeah. We've been using it as well, um, and we were in a pitch against uh, Adobe and Sitecore. Uh, so we use basically the buyer's journey to, to look into the fears and emotions uh, of the potential client. So we came up with a series of questions they would probably have. And we, we, we came up with the, the, the answers to that. And in our presentation, we answered all those questions. And then we've seen them relieved you know, during the presentation. Uh-huh, uh-huh, it's like the aha moments. That was only one pitch, actually, because we made a study out of it. So it actually worked. You, know, you start winning clients, and then you'll go up Well, that's probably why it's most rocky, is it? <laughs> Did you see all the squiggles in the beginning? It's like, turning up a rest. No, alignment is going to be difficult. Right? Yeah, I mean, specifically for people, I mean, tech agnostic it is, but uh, things most of the customers are within Drupal, uh, and, uh, you know, the onboarding 
you say is pretty much defined, uh, except for certain uh, you know, minor differences. But then, to be honest, every customer is unique. So there are, uh, and, and they all, you know, for us, we, uh, we, uh, we work with clients from different parts of the world as well. So, you know, there are many different ways in which how they are actually unique, just the culture or just the kind of engagement that we start with. You know, for some of the clients, we start with actually a project, or some of them, it's like, is extending their team, uh, or for some of them it's actually a support, right? So depending on the engagement also the onboarding is slightly different and we, we learn new things every time the onboarding is a little rocky, but we have, uh, you know, sometimes uh, the clients are onboarded to our own set of tools. They, we have to, you know, help them adapt to our own tools. Sometimes they already have an established process and we are just extend, and extend their team, so we, we adapt to their processes. You know, so different kinds of onboarding happens. Uh, depending on the unique situation, there is a little uh, journey, unique journey that is happening. So in general, we talked about the journey, but then it, it's a tailored journey for every client. And if I can add to that, you know, the most crucial stage is the onboarding. Yeah. Often, uh, you know, uh, ignore. This is when uh, the sales and the marketing team is kind of handing over a relationship to someone. It's like you know, handing over your child to someone else. I'm not a child. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, you, you've met that person, you have had interactions with those people for like months and now you're saying, no, he's going to right. take care of you. It's why we evolved our model. Like, Shreen is a success manager who is in contact with our partners from the beginning, right? So there's that continuity of hands off. Anything else? Any other? They're throwing us out soon. Yeah, John's going to beat me up and throw me out soon. So, any last questions? Look, I hope this helped. I know it was a lot. We're just getting started with this, so I know some of it is slightly disorganized now. The point is it's difficult to follow. Start here. Get, 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 me, get me share some of these spreadsheets. Of course, so you know, yeah. Absolutely. So keep an eye out and we'll put it out there. Thanks, guys. Very good. This was from you, you guys. Okay, right. You guys all right, right. That's, good. Um, that's the most important gadget, actually. Yeah. <laughs> For sessions, you know. Uh, my next one's end of it. No, mine's tomorrow. Mine's tomorrow. ELGO2. Ah, this, this room. All right, okay. Familiar? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be. Uh, okay, there's money out Yes, I'm dreaming. 
drinking or something. It's water. presentation was good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just making fun. Oh, All right. Just a few. <laughs> but as long as it, it shines bright. It, it was good. Oh, thank, thank you. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, no, no. So I got this one, and then we can... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that should be the one. Drupal Survey. 